Hello, everyone. My name is Eric K. Thomas, and I am the editor in chief of the Quintessential Gentleman. And today we are talking to Kwaku Alston, world renowned photographer and the photographer who shot our power issue cover with Charles D. King. My brother, good afternoon. Hello, hello. How are you doing? Thank you for having me. Thank you. I appreciate it. Of course. And I say Kwaku. Some people say Kwaku. So I, I go by Kwaku. My parents might have. Got it wrong when they were going through the seven hey, years. First of all, you can't say you can't say I say and then the no no it's your name so it's Kwaku Kwaku. But when I go to Ghana, they go Kwaku. So I always I've been with my Guyanese friends. It's back and forth. So I just I just let it be. Whatever people want to say, they can say because oh, I'm always no, I was Kwaku Alston. Okay, just so everyone knows, that's how he says it. Everybody, please try to try to do it that way. <laughs> Thank you. But first and foremost, I want to know, just even diving in, like, what made you first, like, pick up a camera? Why was it that you wanted to first um, start taking pictures? Uh, I wasn't really, it wasn't one of those things where I just wanted to start taking pictures. It really came down to, I, uh, my uncle passed away at an early age when I was, he was 38. I was maybe 11 or 12. And my mother inherited his camera. He wanted to be a photographer. I think he was uh, doing a you know advanced hobbyist, taking pictures, doing things in Philadelphia area. And when he passed away, my um, my mother kept the camera in her closet. So one day, as a young little whippersnapper would do, I was going through her closet looking for things, and I found the camera and I started playing around with it, and I accidentally broke it. So my mother said to me, she says, you know, you're going to have to maybe take a photography class to fix the camera, which doesn't work because I took the lens apart with screwdrivers. And uh, I just, from there, I took a class in high school and just, you know, fell in love with it. Wow. Wow. And you said you were, you, I know that you're born in uh, Philly. What part of Philly? I'm originally from West Philadelphia, uh, Palatin Village. And my, you know, I have Baltimore Avenue roots, Yaden outside Philadelphia roots, so, yeah. and Germantown roots. My father was from Germantown. Nice. Well, I was born Northeast Philly, okay, cool. Roosevelt Boulevard. Oh, wow. Oh, Philly, yo. Philly in the building, 215. Listen, yes. all the great It's a great right. town. I love it. I love it. I mean, you. I guess you remember when, you know, the Art Museum, the Rocky, and all, it was just great, and seeing... Uh, how that came back around when they redid it. It is just, it was, it's just a, um, it's a great city, city of brotherly love. And a lot of my friends from Philadelphia, I know there's a different spirit there. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely, and it's like very creative too. Have you, when was the last time you've been in Philly? Well, with the pandemic, it's definitely been some time, a few years, but when I was there, it was, I was doing a lot of music CDs there as well, like Music Soul Child, um, a few other people there. So um, it, I definitely, understand the five spot and all those different places that were downtown but it changes so much it changed, had, and that was, that's what i was going to say i'm like this literally is not even the philly that i was born grew up in it is so different so oh, different it's, it's so gentrified like the, i think it's called fish town and all that yeah. it changed so much which is great um but you know some parts of west philly has changed <laughs> you know i'm still so like bad. whoa <laughs> So I love my West Philly. I love my West Philly. You um, were in high school, picked up the camera, started to fall in love with it. At what point did you realize, like, okay, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life? Was there any particular moment that you were like, okay, I could do this for the rest of my life? Because even so, thinking about how many um, photographers or Black photographers that, that were making a living kind of, you know, doing this, it's different now, but back then, definitely not as many. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it was one of those things where I was just following my passion and I decided to go into photography and art in college, commercial art, rather than doing something like the doctor, lawyer, engineer route, which a lot of my other friends did. And um, I guess it was in college, I really pushed it. I think it was my sophomore year where I said, maybe I can possibly do this, but I was really, you know, it was harder because back then I was like, do I become a federal journalist? Because that's where you saw the, the progression where people were going into. That was a journey, photojournalism or being a wedding photographer. Try, I really wanted to be a fashion photographer, which was, um, you know, 
I had no idea how to become a fashion photographer. I went to a great college, uh, Rochester Institute of Technology in upstate New York. So they definitely gave me the foundation and understanding about commercial photography, fine art photography, and where you can do those different practices at, depending on what you what kind of field of photography you wanna go into. So I think it was my sophomore year of college, I really uh, dug deep into it. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, talking about, you know, over the years, you know, you definitely, have shot enough um, and so many to you know be able to be well versed. But I want to know kind of what is the creative process for you when you go to um, you know any set. You know I was on set with you last month and you you like very just like it's cool it's all right you know and I've been on sets with some photographers like stick let's get it done you know but you know for you it just seems like you're just very like you enjoy doing this which I think is so important but kind of what when you go on to those sets what's kind of like your process and what, what do you think about uh well you know it's really when I in the beginning it, it was totally different like you know I changed a lot of photography this has been a, a long journey of over 25 years but I think what really matters is research 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 and understanding your craft so that you know you can do as much research as possible and something can happen where the celebrity or someone does something or they, they want to change the concept so you just have to have that that knowledge and that understanding of your craft so you can fall back on anything that can happen so i guess it's really about research and understanding your craft and educating yourself as much as possible to be able to create these types of imagery these types of images so, you know, you said you've been in the industry um, for over 25 years. Um, there's been quite a few uh, technological advancements um, of photography uh, mm -hmm. during the way. Do you feel like that has helped or hurt the craft? Ah, uh, well, you know, I think it's really, I, I thought about this question. I think neither. I definitely, think, I'm just gonna say neither because technology is just a tool. That's all it is. I, it's really important that we we become dependent on technology. If you become too dependent on the camera and the automatic exposures and all of that, it kind of it can it can almost become a hurdle. So it really comes down to your vision and what your concepts are, and you find the right technology in order to create that to manifest that vision. So I love technology. I'm a you know I could be a tech techno guy, but I also am a luddite. I love going back to basics, just a light, just a light meter and seeing it. So I think it's nice to have that. I'm at the crossroads of digital and analog, but it really does come down to concept before technology. Yeah. And I think, you know, to your point too, you know, earlier it's about also, we kind of got to know where we came from. You know, yes. you have to be able to know understanding like photography and the basics and understanding kind of how we got to where we are now, um, you know, being paying a lot of attention to what was behind us and those analog cameras and things like that. Because I know, you know, a few photographers and they're like, yeah, this whole auto thing, I need my manual. I need to be able to, you know, do what I need to do in my particular specs. And I'm like, yeah, the only thing I could give you is auto. Um, and <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You, you have to, when, when all else fails, you need to be able to see, you have to be able to see the light. And it's really important. It took me a long time to learn that. And, you know, there's, that's what you know getting older and learning and experiencing life you just need to follow the light sometimes it's as simple as just seeing the light and following it and and, and that's hard because that requires faith in and knowing your exposure and you know when i was in college we would play you know dorky nerdy photography you know games like you had to guess the exposure and you, that's what they did in class. You had to guess the exposure and you had a light meter and we would, you know, drink, drink. And if you got it wrong, you had to take a drink, a shot or something. So it was one of those things. So you had to know your exposure or you end up drunk. That was what photo school was about, art school. <laughs> but it was, um, it's good. So I think it's really important to know that and just be able to trust in yourself, trust in seeing the light. Yeah. Because it's all about light. So talking about life um, and understanding, what were some of like the challenges that you had kind of being in this industry, being a, you know, a black photographer who, you know, has really shot plethora of um, people, especially in um, the various industries? 
Well, there's a lot of challenges. It's like, it doesn't even matter if you're in photography to whatever, you know, there's a lot of challenges in, you know, our society uh, with people of color and things, adversity, things we have to go through. But it also makes you a stronger person. I knew I had to be good at my craft because I might not always get a second chance. Once I was in the door, I had to kick butt and make sure I did the best job possible. Um, so I think it, it, it just challenged me to be better. Because when I was in school, there was maybe out of 900 photo students that are art students, there was maybe, you know, seven to 10 people of color. Wow. So you, you were very aware of, you know, your surrounding and what the real world was going to be about. And um, so I, it definitely has challenges and it has gotten a lot better these last few years. But in the beginning of my career, it, it did, it, it was, you know, I'm like, why are you keep giving me those assignments? Or what are you trying to tell me? <laughs> or, you know, or why don't you like that picture? And they would give you these adjectives and describe, well, it's not this, not hard enough, or it's not, I don't, I don't think that represents this. And I'm like, what do you mean it doesn't represent this? So there was a lot of um, code switching, a lot of, um, you just had, there's a lot of unspoken things that go between the line, read between the lines when it comes to, between art and commerce and culture and identity and all those things when you're trying to make money out of photography and when you get hired it's not always your vision you they want you to do their vision so it's very it's a very uh, interesting tight rope to navigate all these years because i i feel bad sometimes for the younger younger generation because it's hard because you can compromise a lot of your values when it comes to image making because you don't understand the end result or you understand what you're being asked or understanding how your images are going to be used. And then some people don't even understand who they are yet. It could be a long time to figure it out. <laughs> so they just take pictures of what they think of. I am in the beginning. I took pictures of what I thought the, from like what the music videos look like. So there are all these colors and fish eye and all this. And it took me a long time to work through that. Yeah. No, no, I, I definitely understand. Um, so even speaking to kind of this day and age, I want to know, you know, a couple years ago, I'll say, uh, a app came that was focused all on photos, um, which is Instagram. Now it's been videos. Do you think that social media, specifically Instagram, um, hurt uh, the business of photography or mm -hmm. helped uh, you know, that's a great question. It's a great question. It is, I mean, I, I had to think about that for a while because <laughs> I have my positive and negatives. The positives, I'm going to break it into positives. Okay. Uh, I did write this down. <laughs> okay. All right. uh, you know, the great, best thing about Instagram is it helps showcase a new generation of photographers from around the world. That's one positive thing. So people automatically have access a platform to put their imagery up on so people can see it. That's wonderful. I love that. Uh, it created new ways to showcase photography rather than being in a portfolio or a magazine or a billboard CD cover. You got to see it in a digital form every day. Um, the negatives I feel are the fact that the digital, like there, I always notice that it's, I don't always see the craftsmanship. And if you're a seasoned photographer and you worked your whole life and you, you know, went through the rigmarole of going to school and do, going, you know, assisting and doing all, or working in a photo lab or printing, there's a craftsmanship that's there. There's something there that's paying your dues. That's sweat equity. And there's something really beautiful about holding an eight by ten or sixteen by twenty or seeing a 35, 30 by forty print. You really see the craftsmanship of the photography. When you're looking at a photography on the screen that's this big on a cell phone, it there it doesn't translate. You just see the instant, the instant gratification, the ooh, the ah, the color, the gel, or whatever it is. It, it's it's very uh, it's it's fleeting. And what happens is, I, I think that we lose our ability to critic have a critical eye. That's what Instagram has done. But at the same time it's opened a lot of doors and got a lot of people in the door. But, um, and so they can showcase their work and either you're gonna make it or you're not gonna make it. Uh, it's interesting also because Instagram is, I guess it kind of, it created a new swiping culture. And 
you become, it's like, you're, it's like we're being fed images constantly and you're always swiping, swiping, swiping. So people, I, I saw, uh, I saw something, a statistic that said most people don't spend more than three seconds on an image. I mean, that sucks. When I was looking at a magazine, I would, I would go to mag I would be living in New York. I would go down the, you know, downtown Soho to the cool magazine shops and look, I'd be sit there going, wow, my, my photographer buddies and I, creative directors, we would sit there and look at magazines going, oh shit, this is dope. Oh my God, this is it, this is it. Look at this photo. Now it's like swipe, 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 swipe. Okay, swipe. Okay, screen capture, swipe, swipe. And I'm just, and it's, it's it, you, you become desensitized. And I don't think that's good Instagram. It's so interesting you say that. Like, I didn't even think about our consumption of imagery now and how different it, it is. And now I'm even thinking, I'm like, you know, kind of kind of when I hear this question or, you know, read this question, think about it, too, I'm like, you know, for me, it's kind of to your craftsman sort, but also the uniqueness. A lot of people's images, now that we have so they look the same, you know, yeah. depending on yeah. who is shooting it. And also, I mean, there's so many apps out there and if people are using the same apps and all those type of things to you know retouch images and all that type of stuff you know all the images look the same so you really do lose kind of like that individuality that creativeness when you know everybody's kind of using the same tools and yeah and, and i and to your point i definitely think that's why a lot of the youngsters like film is because it gave them that control because they have no control because it's unpredictable still and there's something beautiful about having the light leak. I mean, I, I mean, I, 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 we all like light leaks, but it's something that in the beginning when I started out, we didn't want light leaks as much. But now people really like the flares. They like, they like the. I think it slows the process down for people. I love shooting film because it makes me stay in that moment, and I can't. It's not an infinite. I, I don't have. I can't shoot a thousand pictures of someone. And you definitely will find one picture great if you shoot a thousand pictures. But if you're shooting three rolls of film. When I was shooting, I shoot editorial. We didn't shoot more than six, seven rolls of film. And it was like six, seven rolls is 70 pictures. And you, you got your one picture and it slowed you down. And then it was something really special about that. You know, and now, I mean, people can shoot a thousand pictures digitally and you're definitely gonna have a, a great picture. How can you not have a great picture? And if you have two <laughs> shooter team, it's even, you, you get more pictures. So, I mean, the, the film slows us down, brings us back into the process of photography and to seeing, and seeing is so important. But, you know, I, it's interesting. I have a story. I, I used to print for, uh, I printed for Annie Leibovitz once or twice when I first came to New York. And I was talking to her assistants. You know, she would do all, she would sometimes shoot two to three editorial jobs a day, two or three, wow. right? She only shot one roll of film, two rolls of film max. And it, wow. I, I think I don't think the generation now can even think about doing that. So it's it's interesting how that it's all changed. But I love that people are shooting film. I don't want film to die because I'm a large format shooter. Uh, but you know, it's yeah, it's different. It's different. I don't know how we got there. But <laughs> can you hold right. on? Right. I, I need to plug my I need to plug my computer in. It's running out of battery. I didn't even realize. He, hold on one second. Oh. Let me get my thing. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Okay, where is this? Zooming. We're always zooming. There we go. My life. <laughs> Good. I'm great. I'm great. And it also, you know, um, Instagram did one thing I hate. The worst thing about Instagram, and a lot of the uh, apps like that. Um, it's impossible for an artist to create constantly every day, constantly. Maybe you can do it for a year straight, but you can't do it for 10 years straight. You need time to live and breathe and to experience. So you have something for your art and that takes time. And I, I see photographers putting out work every day, bang, 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 bang. And I'm just like, wow. You spend more time doing that than you do taking pictures, but I'm not sure how they do it, but it's kind of, you need time to breathe. 
and the algorithm set up so if you don't put your images out there every day they don't get seen as much so we become slaves to content creation and be putting out all the time and sometimes you need to grow you need to have an emotional breakdown you need to have a you know a journey somewhere to a spiritual enlightenment you need to go travel or hang out with your family and friends and then and you and find inspiration that way rather than you know finding inspiration on that screen constantly 24 7. so instagram has done something to creatives and i don't like that i mean i know a lot of creative creatives are complaining they're like i just don't want to do social media because all i do is social media and and the agents the galleries everyone wants you to do it and i understand why but there has to be some balance. I think we're we, we're still trying to figure out the balance with social media. No, oh, that's so true. And that's, you know, I definitely wanted to know, like, where do you pour your inspiration from? You know, and that kind of adds to that question of like, you know, when you are taking time, where do you kind of pour inspiration? Um, you know, even, cause it's, it's I've, I've being in this space, you know, being a magazine, we just, we had our magazine, you know, this is our third year doing the magazine. And I've now realized that, you know, when you're coming up with things or if you're talking to, you know, even directions with the graphic designers or photographers, stuff like that, I gotta see something that's like, oh, I think that's cool, but I would do something a different way. But to your point, if you're just shooting, 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 there's no inspiration, but I wanna know from you, where, what, what inspires you? I mean, it, for me, it's like, it's, there's so many things. It's living. You have to live. You have to experience. And however you do it, I mean, by hanging out with your friends or your family or traveling or reading or going to shows, it's everything in life. I can find inspiration off of so many little things. And that, and you have to be open to that. You have to receive it. You have to be open to it. So I'm constantly seeing. I could be walking down in a going for a hike somewhere and see a leaf or a light going through the leaf. And I'm like, oh, that's beautiful. And I'll shoot it. You know, and and that's what it's about. It's not being afraid. It's like it's a guttural thing. And, and I, it took me a long time to learn that and to take a step back, because when you're constantly putting imagery out there and people are appraising it or not liking it or critiquing it, that kind of it can curb that guttural inspiration of putting doing images that just feel good to you that don't have to be uh, that don't have to be sold, I guess. So it, that, I, I think that's where my inspiration is, is going back to that place that I find joy in photography rather than the commerce and art, the art and commerce. So I'm always at that art and commerce, that, that crossroads. That's how I kind of live. And, I, and, it, and it really does work for me, but it took me a long time to figure that out. It took me a long, it took me 20 years to figure that out. Wow, so true. It can be used with anything, not just photography, anything that you're doing. Anything. Um, you, know, yeah. you gotta take that time to find that that inspiration and creation and motivation for you to be able to to create. Yeah, it's it, the artists. Like, there's a lot of great book, books. The Artist Way. I actually got, I had a life coach. Her name is Monica Suter because I was with Stock and Martell as a big advertising photography firm, and I was doing all these photos when I was like 28 to 34, I think. It was one of those mm -hmm. things where I was doing a lot of commercial work and I looked at my work and I was like, my portfolio, I'm like, oh my God, there's all like white seamless and it's just boring. <laughs> I was like, but I was getting paid money. And my right. I, was like, I told my agent, I, really, I don't want to do these kind of pictures anymore. And agents don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that. So I had agent Bill Stockland and he told me, he was the owner, one of the partial owner of Stockland Martell, partner. Oh. And he said to me, he goes, well, I have a uh, life coach, you know, photographer life coach, because you photographers all go through this. I'm like, okay. And I started calling her and having a weekly consultation. It's like a photographer therapist. And it was the most amazing thing I ever did in my life. It really broke me out of the commercial side of photography. And because you you get on this hamster wheel, great image, great image. I want to get back, cover, cover. Oh, this is wonderful. You're so great. You're so great. And you get caught up in all that hype that you forget because you're afraid you're going to not stay there because you work so hard to try to, to get there that you forget that I didn't enter photography for that. I entered photography because I love making imagery. So she helped me get back to that place. And then you work, you have to refill that well of creativity in your body. And then that will make your commercial work that much better. Because when you show up on set, 
you're happy. You're like, oh, no problem. <laughs> it just, it just, it, I'm telling you, every photographer, I know so many, you can be up here one day and you're at the top, Vogue, blah, 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 blah. And the next two years later, you're down there because you get burned out. Yeah. And if you do, if you, if you can't somehow maintain that, that joy and that, and that, you know, creative well of inspiration, you can't do any creative field for a long time. I mean, it, it, you just look at history, read history. Look how Abaddon, he took 10 years off and did the American West, did his personal work. Look at Picasso, look at all these artists and what they had to go through in their lives. You, it's, it's very hard to keep pushing, pumping out work. It's very difficult. So you have to figure that, that road out and, and it's different for everyone. And you have to seek out, I think the most important thing is seeking out a community of other artists and other creatives and mentors that you can, hey, I'm having, I have, I had some great mentors. Like, I'm having a problem. I, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to approach this or whatever it is. You need to have that community to call upon and say, blah, blah, blah. And that's everything. That's everything in this industry. Cause we're on our, we're creatives and we're on our little islands. And it's kind of like, you can get stuck on your island and you, everyone's saying how great you are. And you're on that other island, you're looking around and everyone's kind of great you are, this is the B shit. <laughs> Oh, you know? right, right. So you better, you better, uh, you know, it's hard, man. It took you a long time. It took a long time. No, I mean, that's some great advice like to have. It's just like really having that community and being able to, you know, understand like, you know, the creative side is not a machine. It's not a, you know, a factory where you could just say, okay, do this because yeah, you can't turn it on. Well, look the same, you can't turn it on. You can't turn it on right away. Some people, and you know, I do know some people who, you know, they're very good at compartmentalizing things, but you know, if you want to stay in a creative field and there's so much great, incredible talent, you look through Instagram, there's great talent and you want to maintain a life of working, you better figure out how to keep it, keep that, you know, speak it going, you know, you have to figure out how to do it. One thing I will say um, about Instagram that I do appreciate um, and I, I take it as even myself, you know, years ago, that I feel like there has now become an appreciation for photographers. Yeah. Um, because for, for the average person, you know, people in the industry, of course, they know the work, they look at it, awesome things like that. But even the people back in the day who open a magazine, they'll just, oh, that's a nice photo. And the credit goes to either the publication or the person who's in the photo. But now I feel like, at least with Instagram and a lot of other social media channels, it's like, oh, who took that? Oh, that photographer. And then now they're starting to, in my opinion, starting to get a lot more credit and a lot more focus on, um, you know, that, that photographer as in his craft. Do you kind of see that as well? Or yeah, is I, it just... I, I think, well, what is, I think it's, it's exactly, it, it's always been that way. It's just that we, that we have more channels to get it out. Instagram is a great way to get it out to the marketplace. We never had that before. Before it was like you drop your portfolio off in New York at a magazine on a Tuesday. You didn't get your portfolio back until Wednesday or the following week. And if you got an assignment, that assignment doesn't come out for two to three months. So in between those two or three months, what are you doing? You're dropping your portfolio off trying to get jobs. So now with Instagram, you can take a photograph bang, it's out there. Take another photograph, next year, bang, it's out there. So you have that much more chances of people seeing your work. So it's just a better, it's, that's what's so great about it. It's like, you're your own best publicist. Uh, but you know, it still has to be good work. It has to be good. It has to be good. As you know, talent rises. It just definitely rises. So a lot of, you know, I mean, as, as, and there's so many different types of photography. You know, there's so many, there's fine art, there's commercial, there's photojournalism, there's sports, there's wildlife, there's landscape, there's, uh, you know, everything. <laughs> no, I get it, I get it. Um, another question is that we've kind of seen, uh, and, and just because, you know, you've definitely been in this industry for, um, you know, a couple of decades, and, you know, we have hear so many conversations about Black creatives finally getting um, recognized and, and appreciated and things like that. What do you say to those type of comments? Uh, about time. <laughs> <You know? laughs> That's all I can say. It's about, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's definitely... 
I mean, all, a lot of us, you know, black photographers, you know, those photographers are getting all this credit now. They stand on the shoulders of so many people that came before them. I mean, there's Mark Baptiste it's from Gordon Parks. There's, you know, there's Mark Baptiste. There's Anthony Barboza. There's Keith Major. There's, you know, there's Carl Posey, Baron Claiborne, Matthew Jordan Smith. There's so many people that when I came to New York, I was the young one. Yeah. And I, they were like, why, you know, you know I, Mark took me under his wing. I worked for him for summer. I met Matthew Jordan Smith and him and I are great friends still. But it's like, there was, there was a handful. Renee Cox, there was, there was some great female fine artists. You know, there's a lot of different people. And it was, um, it, we knew who we were. And there's a lot of other ones I'm sure I'm missing, but those would come to mind right now. But the, now the, the people today, and there's this huge push to show diversity in photography, which is great because we have so many beautiful narratives to share and show. And it's not just about these five people. We can't do it all. It's impossible. So I'm really happy that we're getting these diverse things from African Americans, from Africans to uh, all over the world. You know, I think it's really it's so important, and um, it's about time. It's about That's time so because I swear to God, I, I feel like my father says to me, he used to say to me, "Oh, you had more opportunity than I had. I couldn't go do that." Ha 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 ha. <laughs> I'm like, really? Uh, and my grandfather kind of said the same thing. And they're right. The opportunities were not there. When I came to New York in 1994, Vogue magazine wasn't hiring African-Americans for covers of their magazines. I, there was no one shooting covers of the magazines. There was none. And, and I was under the illusion that it was just because your work wasn't good enough or you're not fashion enough or you're not this or you're not in that community or you're not, in, or you're not hanging out at this party or you're not doing this. The doors just weren't open. The, there was a glass ceiling and all this photographers talked about it. We're like, who's going to get it first? Who's going to get it first? That's one great thing about social media, but it's also great about the power of the celebrity that helps open doors too. So it's a two prong effect and never before that, that, that it, I started in 1995 in 94, 95 and the Vogue cover and all these other covers didn't happen until 2018 and 2019. I would have spent the last 15 years being an investment banker. It made a million dollars <laughs> rather than, than thinking that you had a chance, you know? So there was, it's kind of stifling for a lot of older photographers who are like, wow. And you did all, it's, it's kind of like, there's a little bit of, you know, but you have to understand that it, that's what that goes back. It makes me realize my father said, I didn't have the same opportunities you had. And we saw how long it took. And I was, went to the best photo school and one of the best photo schools in the world. And, and I saw my assistants get the covers of Vogue's and saw my assistants get Gucci campaigns and saw my assistants do all that. And then you're like, wow. And, and, you know, you're, and you're always told the same thing. It was always like, you're not fashion enough. You're not this enough. You're not that enough. And then now you're seeing ex video directors getting or video directors, movie directors getting covers of Vogue. So it had nothing to do with any of that. Yeah. So that's, it's disappointing because I would have maybe done a career to make a lot of money and then do this in my old age, but I'm right. happy. I'm happy. I, I, you know, I had a great, I have a great career. I'm happy with all the opportunities and the people that gave me work, but a lot of it, it, I think, I think it was kind of a, a lot of photographers felt that was like, wow. A lot of the older guys who were out there, they're like, wow. Yeah, for sure. So you speak about, you know, kind of your career. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about your legacy um, and how, do you feel knowing that your images um, and the work that you've done uh, will not only be part of your legacy, but also the legacy of some of the iconic people you've shot? I mean, I could go through the list, but I think about the ones that are not here anymore, like John Singleton, um, who shot Chadwick Boseman. And I just, you know, that legacy part is so important to me and so important to, I feel, to speak about with Black men because it is, you know, regardless of what you are, you do have a legacy, you do, you know, produce things. And I, I wanna know how you feel about that. Uh, I think it's really interesting because I never thought about that when I, would, I, when I first started doing photography. I wasn't thought I was gonna be creating these images that represent culture. Or, you know, I never thought about that, but it, it didn't hit me until after a few years in and you start seeing people pass away, uh, or how people viewed your imagery, uh, that's when I realized the power of what I had. I was at this intersection. I was right there. I'm at 
I'm at the, you're right there at that cusp of what you shoot can actually have influence on culture. And I started realizing that around 30. And I, you know, I made it, I made a conscious decision not to make imagery that was negative in light. I never wanted to make an imagery that made me look bad because I knew I had to go out into this world and shake hands, kiss babies, and and try to get work. Because when you, when you think about it, there wasn't that, I mean, the African American media in the 90s, there wasn't a lot. There wasn't enough, there was just enough to maintain a handful of people, but the, you, there wasn't enough to, hand, you know, the, 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 the floodgates weren't open. So I had to go work out and try to get as much work from outside the African American community and go into the mainstream market and try to get that work, which I was competing against all these big name uh, photographers. Uh, I knew that it was really important that I show imagery of myself so I can help change the narrative in a positive light to help change that narrative of how people see us. Because a lot of photographers, you say, you know, you, you, I used to shoot a lot of hip hop and people have no problem showing negative imagery because it doesn't affect them the same way. And they don't even realize it, it's not conscious. They just think that's how it is. And I'm like, that's not how it is. That's how it's created. The imagery, the image, the narrative is shaped and it all begins right here. And then it's signed on and then it's put out into the mass media. And then it affects us in a way that we are not always conscious to. We are, are we, it's so important to understand who am I? What am I? Why am I? If you do not understand those three questions, those three words, you're going to be susceptible to all this imagery and you're just going to be lost. So it takes, you have to really understand how deep imagery and how it affects culture. Because, you know, it's, it's just senses, it's, it's smelling, hearing, and seeing. The, the, the sight, the sight sense is so powerful. And I just think that, you know, there's so much to it, man. There's so much to it, you know? <laughs> Yeah. All right. My last question. I know you are very busy. I just want to know what can we look forward to from Waku Austin? Retirement. <laughs> I think I'm no. Yeah, no. Oh, no, not I, yet. I, I mean, I, I think, you know, let the young kids do it, man. I mean, I, I really want to. Um, like I was saying before, like the young, these young kids are getting these great opportunities, which are wonderful, but they need someone to help them navigate the challenges that are ahead of them. Contract negotiations. How much are you worth? Don't sell your rights away of your imagery. And I, I really want to take, I like, I like artist coaching. I really do like that. I think that's going to be probably part of my future giving workshops, but I think my, what I, what I can do is help all these young brothers and sisters and people from all other cultures to really make the right decisions in creating a career that they can be proud of in the end. And I have so much knowledge. I mean, I was with the best agencies and I worked with some great people that I, and people call me up all the time, uh, the rights for this or that, or I, they want me to sign this contract and I just help them go through it. And, you know, I just, I'd rather take on that role, more of a mentoring role and helping people make better decisions because I'm telling you right now, the, the agents are just, they just, you know, I can, I can tell you the best agencies 10 years ago had no brothers. Now all of a sudden they all want us, men yeah. with whatever, you know what I mean? There wasn't as much. So now all of a sudden it's the coolest thing to have is a, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it's yeah. like, wow. So it goes back, it goes back to money. So you have to understand that you, you, you get these covers, you get the stuff, you think you're great because they'll hype, hype, hype you up. But when it, that money is about that money because they can sell you, sell you, sell you. So I think it's really important that they have someone they can at least call and say, am I getting a good price? Because let's be realistic. If you're 22 years old and someone says, I'm giving you $25,000 a day to shoot this campaign, yeah. you're going to go, oh, this is great. This is wonderful. But so and so is getting fifty to sixty. Let's be realistic, and you have no idea because you don't have a community, or there's no one there to help school you. So, I was lucky. I had some great mentors, great mentors: Hollis King, Kevin Stewart, George Pitts, Kathy Ryan, Marie Tobias, Marie, Marie uh, Maria Lorenzen. I had so many, so many I could just name off that were editors that took me under their wing and said, 
blah, blah, blah. This is what you need to do. So I think it's really important that I, at this age, I'm 51. I'm, I, I like shooting, but you know, I really, I think, I, I don't know. I'm trying to figure out how I can do that. How I can make a career somehow. I will always shoot because I, I love doing photography. And I, but I just want to help out somehow with the youngsters because they're getting ripped off. They don't even know it. No, for sure. Well, Kwaku, thank you so much for talking with us today. We appreciate it. Also, thank you for shooting our beautiful cover. Oh, that everybody thank you. Thank you for having me. When they, when they hear this, they would have already seen it. So, <laughs> great. Um, so thank you so much. No, thank you. And uh, everyone, just enjoy your life and enjoy community and just we're here and yeah, all good. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. <laughs>